What's going on guys? Today we're gonna do a tie through um, with some of the new spawn fly lead fly heads. Um, I'm really excited about these personally. Um, given that I normally fish a weight forward floating line. So this really is gonna help put it down into the strike zone where I want it. So I'm gonna be just kind of freestyling a little um, bait fish here. Starting off with a Nordic Salt streamer hook, size six from Arex. I don't know if you can see that or not. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, right now, I have my hook on my vise, and I have 100 denier GSP wound up, ready to go. Almost wound up. Ready to go. So my thinking for this is mostly going to be uh, EP scale effect fibers. Um, I'm really a fan of these. These are pretty darn cool. I mentioned them in my uh, Casper video a while back. Uh, so I'm going to be tying with those today. So first things first, after putting my thread on, is I'm going to fit the hook. And this is going to be a micro-ish streamer. So once I have that point, I'm looking inside there to see reasonably where my materials will fit up to. I'm going to mark that with my thread and wind it all the way back and we're going to put in our tail. So what I've done here is I've grabbed a really light cluster of these SE fibers which uh, look like this and I've blended it with uh, some Snake River Fly creels on in Peacock. You guys want to see the label there and what I've done is I've just lightly tapered it oh yes I also added uh, olive green laser dub if I remember correctly just a just a smidge so what I've done is I've tapered this and I'm gonna measure about a hook shank and a half and that's where I want my tail so I'm going to take this and tie this in nice and tight, give it a couple of really solid wraps to make sure it's in there good, and I'll wrap forward a little bit. And once we've got that down nice and tight, I'm going to snip the excess there and neaten this up right here so what we're doing with this is this is going to be almost 100% um, dubbing loop is the the body of this fly so I'm going to take my bootleg uh, dubbing hook make our loop wrap around our loop twice here so we make sure it stays in place and wrap it back to the base of our tail I'm going to set that aside for a minute and wind up just behind our marked point up at the front here so I've got that ready to go I'm going to put it in my makeshift bobbin cradle and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a brush and let's see if you can see this here this is the same stuff that I used for tail it's the creels on um, SE fibers and a little bit of green laser dub and I'm going to I want to measure this and make sure this is the right length and it's just a smidge long what, I, what I'm looking for here is at the back point I want this to be about half 
the tail length to get it a teardrop profile, which is what we're looking for when we're trying to imitate bait fish. So it's just a smidge long. So I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna do this here. Halfway point, yep, that's too long. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snip just about a half inch off there. All right, that leaves you with a whole bunch of clean ends, which we're not looking for. We're looking for a nice taper. So I'm going to work that back into itself. Get that going. Now this is not going to be enough for a dubbing brush, actually. So I'm going to do the same thing with our other clump here. Again, trim just a little bit off the ends. And then I like to just work this around a little bit get these exposed ends and get them nice and tapered with the rest of it. So that's looking okay. Now we're going to mix it back with our uh, other clump. Make sure that's nice and even. So now we've got this mass here and we're going to take it in our dubbing loop. Let's see if you can see that there put it right in there and then I'm gonna spread this out nice and thin in here the goal here is uh, sparse and long uh, dubbing brush because what I've found is that when you pack too many materials in tight too close together uh, they get kind of wild and hard to brush out and you don't get as tight of a dubbing brush because there's a whole lot of materials packed real close together. Um, so we're just gonna go through and make sure that's semi-straight. And now that we've got the brush, we're gonna spin this up. Keep in mind that the finished product is gonna be just a little bit shorter than your unspun brush because when you spin the thread it winds up on itself and gets really packed close together so we're going to spin this a good bit and we're going to come through and kind of pick these out just just lightly here and we're going to put it through the spin cycle again just to make sure all these fibers are trapped real nice because we don't want anything really falling out on us. Okay, uh, easier way to do this, Velcro. Really helps pull all those nitpicky fibers back out. And then once we have that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all these to one side here. And essentially, treat it almost like a hackle. I'm gonna wet my fingers, keep these in check. We're gonna get spinning here. So the key here is gonna be nice, even wraps. Don't need to be too close together because the thread here is the same color as our dubbing loop and brush color. If you're going to do different colors on this, I'd suggest just making sure that you've got the got the right distance in between them so you're not showing too many gaps. We're gonna take this up. One more wrap. Take our bobbin out of the cradle. Drop our scissors. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick off these last strands that aren't going on the brush. I'm going to put my thread right in that groove. 
And what I'm trying to do there is really capture the core of our dubbing brush instead of all these extra fibers that we want picked out. That'll give us an, an even distribution later on. Okay, so now that's tied in. I'm just gonna go over that, cinch it down real tight, make sure that's not going anywhere. I'm gonna throw on a double half hitch. So we're not gonna lose track of our progress. That's a important thing to remember when you're working with GSP because it does not stretch at all. So you really need to make sure you're putting in half hitches to save your work because it'll back off on itself when you try and do that. So here I'm coming through and picking apart our brush, trying to get all of our little extra strands out. So once I feel like I've done a pretty good job with my makeshift bodkin, AKA my scissors, I'm gonna just see how that looks. Nice, if you can, you can see that taper is a lot, a lot smoother than if we just uh, brought it all the way back here. It'd look more boxy at this end. So now what I'm gonna do is for a little extra flash, I'm gonna take some more of our, uh, of our crinkles on and pull that out. Really cool stuff, by the way. I'm a fan. We're gonna measure this back to about, oh, here. I lied, we wanna, we wanna keep with that teardrop pro profile. So we're gonna tie it in right here. Get our pinch. And work that up. And then I'm actually going to cut our excess on this side off, not button, kind of a taper, so it doesn't look that apparent. It looks janky right now, but it'll clean up in a second here. And then we're gonna wrap back down. You gotta be careful, this is a slick material, so you wanna make sure you get good wraps on it. Okay, I think that's looking pretty nice. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw on a double half hitch because I really am not wanting to do that over again. Uh, and I guess an important step before you put on the crinkles on, if you're not happy with your profile, you can take a pair of scissors and come in and trim at just kind of 45s, trying to make sure you get your profile where you want it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some Ripple Ice Fiber in orange from Hairline Dubbin. And for giggles and grins, we're gonna take a few strands here and we're gonna tie in a throat patch. So what we're doing here we're taking this roughly halfway. It, it doesn't matter as much for this one because we're gonna trim the ends. And we're gonna tie it in over here. 
see if we can get that dispersed relatively even and then fold it back over on a 45 and we're going to cinch that down and we are going to collect our fibers here because they're so much longer than everything else, they're a lot easier to pick up. And we're going to cut those to desired length. I want them pretty, pretty short. So that's probably half an inch or so. So now we have our throw patch in, our top crinkles on, reflective flash imitating that bait fish back. And now what I'm going to do... So I'm going to whip finish it off and trim it. And here comes the fun part that I did not prepare for in this video. You know, super glue. Our, it helped if the super glue was open. We're going to super glue the fly head to ooh, that's a lot of super glue we do not need that much uh, so I'm just going to take a little bit of super glue here uh, probably not advisable to do this with scissors actually very much not advisable to do this with scissors bodkin would work um, and I'm just going to super glue the inside here and make sure it gets around a bit. And then making sure I don't have any super glue on my fingers. I'm going to move the materials back and apply the head just like that. And then Basically, you're waiting for that to cure, and you're good to go. So I just wanted to say a quick word, again, about um, the spawn fly head. I am really stoked. I think we have another one over here. Really stoked um, for these to come out from spawn fly fish. I'm a huge fan of fishing uh, weighted streamers, just with the nature of the setup I run. So this is, this is going to be a game changer in my box for water columns and targeting presentations. And then I can take this out and show you guys. There we go. One size six bait fish looking streamer. It was another episode of Swanson Fly Tying. Thank you guys for tuning in.